Okay. Three, you ready? Two, one. The Meg Show is on full display in the dome. Let's go! The Megan to Megan Show continues. Carney to Tyrell. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to The Meg Show. I'm one of your hosts, Meg Tyrell. And I'm Meg Carney. And we're so, so excited to get the ball rolling on this podcast with you guys. Something we've been thinking about for a while and with lacrosse season right around the corner. Kind of figured it'd be the best time to kind of pull this together. I mean, why not? One week before the first game. Um, yeah, and as this is the first episode, we figured we'd kind of give you guys a little bit of context as to maybe what the Meg Show is going to be about, who we are, and, you know, things to look forward to for 2024 season. Um, and then also looking back at the 2023 season as well. So kind of just let's talk about us a little bit, who we are as people. If you're listening, maybe you play lacrosse, maybe a friend of a friend plays lacrosse, maybe you know who we are, but we're excited to share this little bit of piece of you guys because you know us as the athletes, but maybe you'll get to see a little bit more of who we are as people. Uh, just to give a little context, um, my name is Meg Tyrell and this is my good friend Meg Carney and we are the most recent alumni of Syracuse University women's lacrosse team. We've been playing together for five years um, starting playing both on attack. So it's kind of like we were destined to be friends from there. Um, Not destined, forced. That's what she and says. We lived together it. for four years. Um, so yeah, we really were destined to be friends, came in as freshmen together, met each other a few times at camps leading into college before we were freshmen. I don't feel like we were ever really that close really before college. Um, Maybe we hit it off once or twice at a camp. Meg also, now that I'm thinking about it, was never at camp. So that's why we were never friends beforehand. If anyone knows Meg, was in our recruiting class, played with us, was at these camps, you know Meg was never there. She always had something. And keep in mind, she was just in Long Island. It's not like she was that far, <laughs> but somehow she always had a coincidence. Um, so that's why probably we're not roommates freshman year. Um, we hung out all the time freshman year, but... We didn't start living together until sophomore year. And from there, we lived together the next four years and just hit it off, um, both on and off the field. I would just like to defend myself a little bit here. A lot of the times, my recruiting class went to the summer camp. It was at the end of July. And if you're my friend, you know that my birthday is also at the end of July. And oh, that's yeah, right. you know, <laughs> yeah, and you know, Maybe I should have been at more camps, but I went to it one summer out. camp and it all worked out. The I went to winter part, camps. So, <laughs> yeah, I think I only went to one winter camp when I was getting recruited. I don't know if I ever went once I was committed, honestly. Winter was hard. It was snowing. I was coming from Texas. My flight probably would have gotten canceled or something. Speaking of, when I was getting recruited, I committed right after a winter camp. I'm this kid from Texas, maybe seen snow once or twice, like a light dusting, never really seen a snowstorm. I'm at winter camp in Syracuse. I'm flying home and I'm trying to decide where I'm going to commit. I'm flying home and this plane is being de-iced. I, first of all, didn't really love flying at the time. So my parents were probably like, oh no, she's going to be scared. She's going to be so confused. Like she's not going to want to go here. This plane's being de-iced. I've never seen this before. But somehow I still wanted to go there, even after it was a whiteout. It was there was so much snow when I after I or right before I committed. Isn't it beautiful um, though? Oh yeah, the best place ever. But it all worked beautiful. out. Meg was a lefty, I was a righty, so we never have had any issues there. Thank gosh. Um, but yeah, played with each other from the beginning all the way till the end, ups and downs together. We went through it all together. Yeah, if you were to have told me when I was a freshman in high school getting recruited that I'd be best friends with someone from Texas, I would have been extremely confused because prior to Meg, I didn't really know anyone from Texas. Everyone I knew was kind of on the East Coast. So I'm grateful though, because I got to go to Texas, pretty cool place, went to Dallas, had a lot of fun there. Um, yeah. That was a little bit of a side check though. Um, just to move this along a little bit, <laughs> um, 
just to give us a little bit more, I guess, credibility, you know, in our five years at Syracuse, we've seen a lot, we've experienced a lot. Um, and we were very, very fortunate to be surrounded by such great coaches and such great teammates and the most supportive fans ever. And if you were ever at a game in the dome, you will understand what I mean by this. Um, so, you know, we've earned a couple accolades here and there. We've seen a lot. We've been to a national championship. We've been to final fours, ACC championships. We were always very competitive playing deep into May. Um, and then like towards so the end of our careers, part. you know, oh my gosh. Yeah. You play to play in May. Wow. That kind of, yeah. um, but yeah, we were kind of able to build a bit of a rep for ourselves within the lacrosse community and take that. And that was kind of the push I would say for me, at least to kind of want to do this podcast thing and get into it. Uh, yeah. what was it? My senior year, our senior year last year or two years ago, two years ago, I brought up the idea whenever NIL became oh, like, yeah, whenever NIL thing, became a thing, you and like podcasts were becoming that, popular and big. Yeah. I want to say it was our senior year, right? Yeah. I, uh, well, our NIL was end of junior year, like just got passed or signed junior year going okay. into senior I know something sometime around there. Um, but yeah, Meg has had the idea at some point just a few years ago. Um, sort of just brushed it over my shoulder or my head. I don't know. Didn't really think much of it. Um, I was like, yeah, it's a great idea. Probably two people that don't really talk much um, are going to start a podcast. <laughs> I don't know about that. Whatever. Didn't really do much about it. It was one of those things like, oh, it's a good idea. We should do it. And then we don't do anything about it. Like it would have been never hard. Made it out of the group chat. <laughs> never made it out of the group chat. It would have been hard, honestly. I was thinking about it the other day. Like we were in school, even our fifth year, like you're get in your master's program. I wasn't, but I was still busy doing something. Uh, who knows? Rehabbing, going physical therapy, probably. Yeah. Who knows? You were studying. I was probably playing basketball with Tessa, honestly, or swimming laps. <laughs> I wasn't that busy, oh, but. Or walking the neighborhood dog. Yeah, or walking the neighborhood dog. Um, we always had found something to do outside um, when we had time off. But it was one of those things where it definitely did not make it out of the group chat at first. And then my point of view is just last month, what was it, November, December, we were in Nashville together mm -hmm. um, doing a camp coaching. Um, was an awesome weekend, was only there for maybe 48 hours and we made the most of it, hadn't seen each other in a while. And Meg mentioned it again, like we should do this podcast. And I thought, all right, if she's still mentioning it two years later, she probably really wants to do it. And we'll, like, we should probably actually put some effort into this while we still had the chance. We're still somewhat relative out of college, like not that washed up yet, still have somewhat of a name for ourselves. Um, so why not take advantage of it before it's too late? And yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could not have said it any better, Meg. That's exactly what happened. I brought up the idea and I was so pumped about it like two years ago. I was like, this would be such a great idea. It's the name's already there. All we have to do is just start talking. Yeah. And Meg's right, you know, <laughs> with, <laughs> with school and with lacrosse and just everything in general, it would have been way too much. It wouldn't have been anything like what we would, we would have wanted it to be. And yeah, it would have been cool to have us do it while we were playing. But I just think at the time there was just so much going on. Um, but to be able to kind of start this and do this now, fresh out of playing collegiately, still have an eye for the game. I think there couldn't be a better time for us to do this. And especially with season starting just this weekend, there's so, so much to look forward to. So I hope that gave you guys a little bit of a synopsis of who we are, what the Meg show is going to be about with a few little personal details in there for fun. <laughs> yeah. Luckily we didn't have to come up with a name. I, I'm not sure either of us are that creative. Um, <laughs> so that might've taken us a while, but luckily we didn't have to come up with a name. Um, when I told my family we were doing it, they were like, Oh, what's it going to be called? I was like the Meg show, obviously like we didn't have to come up with Duh. it. Um, we're just gonna take it and use it. Shout out whoever came up with that, Alyssa, Murray, Hallie, uh, one uh, of Alyssa? the announcers. Maybe Sam. Yeah. I don't know. Someone Sam. came up with it and thank you. Who's Sam? She's one of the reporters. Oh, oh, oh. She's one of the reporters. Yeah. Sarah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. 
someone came up with it. So shout out to the person that did that. You yeah. were very inspirational. Oh, um, I do think before we dive into the coming season, I think we can just talk a little bit more about our previous years. Um, our freshman year, Meg and I started and played from the beginning. We made it all the way to the Elite Eight. We ended up losing at Northwestern in the Elite Eight. That was an awful feeling. I remember that game so vividly. It was freezing cold. Um, we were outside on the lake, which honestly, it's a pretty cool field to play at. It's right on the lake. You can see downtown Chicago. It is freezing, but it is definitely a very nice facility. Um, so our freshman year ended there. That was very hard. I think we were pretty close with the seniors and fifth years that year. So it's never fun when the season ends, obviously, um, unless it's a national championship, but we wouldn't know that. Um, it's never fun because then your seniors that have sort of taken you under your, yeah. under their wing as freshmen um, then leave. So that ended at Northwestern. And then sophomore year was COVID. I remember that so vividly being at UVA. We just got there. We were getting ready to play our game. And did we bust to the field? We had walkthrough and then came back. We did a Yeah, we did a walkthrough at the field because it was at like 12, the walkthrough. And then we were supposed to play at night or something. But prior and to prior that to walkthrough, the Ivy League announced they were canceling their season. Mm-hmm. I think the Pac-12 at that time mm-hmm. announced they were canceling their season. So we're all stressed. Like, oh, my God, yeah. we're in... Virginia, we're about to play a game and everything around us is shutting down. And um, prior to that, the UVA game leads to the best point of the season, other than playing in May, um, spring break. Syracuse always has a great spring break. When Gary was our coach, <laughs> we would go to Florida. We'd rent these like mansions. I don't know, very nice houses, three or four of them. They'd split us up. We'd stay in Florida for four days, have a game before and a game after. So he found a way to get us there, which was awesome. Um, always looked forward to that because during that time, March in Syracuse, it's not very sunny if you've ever been. Um, so yeah, we, I think COVID started being talked about um, or it was being like speculated leading up to UVA. And we were all like, all we got to do is get out of Syracuse. We just got to get to UVA. And then we can get to Florida from there. Oh, right. We were just betting on that. Like I would bet so much money if we, that once we made out of Syracuse, we were good to go. We were going to get to go to Florida. Um, But yeah, one by one conferences were canceling. I think the men's team was hearing more about it than we really were um, from just like their friends. So we are going back and forth with them. Like, Hey, we heard PAC 12 canceled. Oh, the Ivy just canceled. Like who's next big 10, like whatever it was. And then yeah, we had to walk through, got back to the hotel we were staying at. I literally remember it so vividly. We were in the conference room where we eat all of our meals, the, where we do treatment, and we got the news that our season was canceled and that we were not going to Florida. That was that was devastating. One, because, you know, we only played a couple games and, you know, that season we were kind of picking up momentum. The team was we clicking. So we were looking well. great. And like, like I said, it was the beginning of the season, so obviously there's still time for – things to change and whatnot, but we were really picking up some momentum moving forward and season gets canceled. All the seniors think like that was the end. Like they were so upset and we were upset for them too. Cause it was like such a great like leadership class for us to kind of help push us along. And they were all like a lot of them started too. So they were all in the field. Um, so they were really, really, really sad so we were sad for them as well and then the next so this might the next heartbreaking news that occurred was we were we were supposed we were supposed to fly home uh from virginia and i know this might sound like whatever but in our heads we're like okay like yeah spoiled whatever we were supposed to fly home and we were like okay like as like as long as we kind of get out of here we'll be fine get back to syracuse so we can figure out what's going on the rest of the day goes by and in our heads, we're like, okay, we're flying home. This will be no big deal. Flash forward a few hours, bedtime, we're going to sleep. Hey, bus tomorrow, 6 a.m., all the way back to Syracuse. The devastation was ridiculous. We've had some long bus rides because of unfortunate events. One being a pandemic, yes. which I get, airports are shut down. 
to have had some very long bus rides because of losing a game, which we deserve that. But hearing that our season is canceled and then we are busing back to Syracuse was I like can't even fathom. I don't really remember honestly. That was like a fever Wait, dream to me that like we were on the bus for that long. <laughs> It's just for some clarification, in case you don't know the distance between Syracuse and Virginia, that was like over it. 10 hours on the bus. Yeah. Um, and and add time do for that the bus night, because... Um, I can't really remember, to be honest with you. I was just really upset about losing. Yeah, I was very upset. I mean, we not were losing. I was with... upset about losing my season. Let's see. It is a... Mm, I remember it being longer. It's only saying eight hours. Plus bus, plus stops. That's true. Probably, yeah. Probably was about was, 10 hours was, by the time we got back. It was, easily, it was easily <laughs> over 10 hours. And I wish I was being dramatic about that, but I'm not because I was so upset about it. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, so that's how the 2020 season concluded. However, right. the plus side of on that bus ride was there was – sprinkles of news that the NCAA was giving everyone, every spring athlete back their season. So everyone got a fifth year or an extra year of eligibility. Also that year, I think most people forget, but I don't, we were national champions. Oh my God. The virtual ones. <laughs> we were virtual national I champions. I don't I know why we get a ring for that. <laughs> I don't know. Like, no one really gave us any credit for that. But technically, we were virtual national champions. Not just kidding. Um, that was really dumb. But Wow, well, I forgot about that. Um, but yeah, we ended the season because of COVID. We honestly were sort of on a high note at that time. We were doing very well on a win streak. So was the men's team. The men's team was doing very well. Um, so that got us into... 2023 season another great year for us so that would be our girl. junior 2021. year 2021 yeah you said 2023 it was 2021 oh yeah yeah and then 20 2021 was oh yeah yeah right they don't really go. teach you math. there you go it's been a while so yeah covid was 2022 junior year was 2021 Yep. Meg, Meg, COVID was 2020. Yeah. Junior year was 2021. You just said said COVID was 2022. No, COVID. Okay. Guys, COVID was 2021. Junior year was then. And I have a stroke. Oh my God. (laughs) God. God, I'm so dumb. I'm sorry. Um, COVID (laughs) was 2020. (laughs) Okay, Megan, just let me handle it. 2020. COVID was 2020, 2021, the year after COVID, people had been not seeing each other, not in contact for months. Everything was shut down. Restaurants restaurants were shut down. You couldn't hang out with more than 10 people or whatever it was if you're in New York. Um, and, oh, and also, it awful. It, like for like athletes, at least gyms were shut down too. So if you didn't have a gym at home or knew somebody who had a gym, you kind of had to work with what you had. So well. So, exactly. So you kind of had to work with what you had. So that was, so the season ended in March of 2020, for the COVID season. And we don't start playing until what, like October of our junior year? Yeah. Yeah. It was October. We didn't start playing until October. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because we came back to school and it that was, was like awful. the rules. Yeah. The rules, we basically weren't allowed to practice as a team together so this whole thing got delayed so we went from march to october without playing competitive yeah without playing competitive lacrosse we come back we're so pumped to play you know to be able to get back out there together be competitive play the sport that we love to play go home for winter break come back spring 2021 that season was such a great it was like an overall like as like our scores was great but i think internally as a team we were we kind of struggled a little bit because i mean 
I think Meg can speak more on this, but that season we saw such leadership roles on the team come down with some season ending injuries. And I mean, I can speak on that, but. We definitely faced a lot of adversity that year, um, which is good and bad. I mean, it's always great to face adversity and made us stronger. We still made it all the way to the national championship. We did not win, but the fact that what we faced and we made it that far, I think was really awesome for us as a program, as a whole. Um, We really were, were ride or die for each other's next man up mentality all the time because Unfortunately, we did have a lot, like we were dropping like flies. Chuck went down, Vanessa went down, I went down. Who else? I mean, just injuries along the way. Um, But yeah, I ended up tearing my ACL last regular season game in the Dome, Thursday, April 22nd. I remember it so vividly um, against BC. Yeah, it was either that game because that year after COVID also, we played ACC teams twice, some of them. Yeah. So we played... BC twice, we played like Notre Dame twice. It was very, it was very weird for women's lacrosse. At least I know in the ACC, I think sometimes the men, they see each other <laughs> once or twice Wait. throughout the, or two times throughout the season. Um, yeah, we lost 13, 14. Wow. I really thought we won that game. Oof. I side note also just have like the worst memory of like stats and lacrosse and stuff. So that's why Meg's here. We lost April 22nd. It was a Thursday. Lost 13-14. I went down end of the game, tore my ACL. We played them, like Meg said, we played ACC teams twice. We played them two days later on the 24th, a Saturday, and then we won 16-7. That's what I remember because I couldn't play. We won, and that was awesome. Um, Yeah. Yeah, that year was weird because I totally forgot about that. We did play. Mm -hmm. We played Notre Dame twice, Mm -hmm. Duke twice, NBC twice, something like that. It was, Or maybe it was Louisville, one or the other. Um, we played a Louisville bunch of teams twice. twice. Mm-hmm. Um, cause Better there was still this remnants of COVID hanging around. So mm-hmm. tried to keep that safer, I guess, in a way. Yeah. Um, that was so annoying. We'd have to test like in the morning at like 6am <sighs> we were testing all the time. Meg and I did get our vaccines together though. I don't know if we should be saying we have the COVID vaccine on here, but we do. Um, and then two days later, I tore my ACL. So let's just blame it on COVID. Let's just blame it on COVID. What was that two days yeah, later? So, wow. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was the 2021 season. We made it to national championship and we lost. <laughs> um, yeah, that that was tough. Um, I mean, it was a great... It was honestly, it's the losing part isn't fun, obviously, but there's just so much, especially recently, which this is like a side note of it, like so much great lacrosse being played where you get to those final four games or those final four teams. And it's a fun game to watch unless, you know, it's just, it's always interesting. So the losing part, obviously you get there, you want to win because everyone plays to win a national championship, but watching the games, it's competitive. And especially moving forward now, it's just only going to get better. So being in that moment, so cool to be there, to feel that atmosphere, that environment. Um, And even feeling the losing, like looking back on it, I was still surrounded by my family was there, thankfully, you know, and my, you know, extended family come down too. My friends were around me, my team was around us. And it was just as much as it hurt, um, it's just still an experience and, you know, you're lucky to get there. Not everyone can say that they've been there and, you know, even fewer people get to say they won. So I think that experience in itself was pretty cool. And then moving forward to that 2022 season, our senior year, our senior year, Mm -hmm. it was exciting. You know, we ended up, we ended our season at the end of May flash forward fall ball comes around we're playing, you know, it's exciting to have everybody back on campus. Meg's still rehabbing. Yeah. Correct. Correct. I did not Meg's play still that rehabbing. Fall. I think I only did like um, two run tests in my five years. I was going to say, I think that you've only done one fall ball. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, freshman year fall, I was out. Sophomore year fall, did that. Junior yeah, year fall, did. COVID. COVID, so we didn't have it. Senior year fall, rehabbing ACL. And then fifth year fall, I played. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, that's accurate. Oh, that sophomore year fall ball, I was in the best shape of my life. I don't yeah. know what we were doing, but I was in such good shape that fall. Um, <laughs> moving yeah, forward, 22... <laughs> Yeah. 2022 comes around. Um, we're heading into season and, you know, unfortunately the injury bug just would not leave us alone. I don't know never, what, never. what it is, what it was, but we just could not, could not catch a break with that. Yep. Couldn't Sierra went down. Kate went we down. Had... Jenny Markey went down. Uh, your, your sister, Meg, I think you're flash forwarding too far. I think Kate got hurt our fifth year. No. Oh, you're right. Oh, God. Yeah. I don't know. They Next all together. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. No. So <laughs> our senior year, we did see some unfortunate injuries. Um, we had Meg back. We had Emily Harshuk. She came back as well. Our senior year, she mm -hmm. was playing with her, um, her injury or her injury year, or COVID year, whichever one it was. And then, you know, we unfortunately had some more injuries. We had Sierra go down, which was so devastating. And then um, there was honestly so many, it's kind of hard to keep track. I know. At like, this I point. don't want to leave anyone out, but like, I know, sorry, I but there was a lot. Like, there's like, oh, and then Wardo got hurt as well. Oh, her toe. Um, yeah. And then my sister, she tore ACL yep. too. So it was just, oh, and Kenzie Harris. So it was just like, oh, yeah. boom, 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 boom. And we were like, wow. Yeah, you've really been put through the ringer. Like, you haven't gotten her, but you've had to deal with it all, like, mentally and emotionally. Yeah, that's a, the different aspect of it, almost. <laughs> like, um, watching everyone, like, because a lot of them, the people that got hurt, they were, I played with them all the time, you know, I was building chemistry mm -hmm. with them on the field. And then to lose those people mid season, towards the end of season, I think. It was really, it was really difficult to, you know, keep putting on like a, okay, let's keep moving forward. Let's keep doing, mm -hmm. but it's true though. Cause that's what has to happen. Yeah. And that's just the reality of it. And so especially I wish that being like an next upperclassman. Yeah. Especially being an upperclassman for you, a captain, you've now dealt two years back to back. Um, like some of our key players going down with injuries and you the whole time have had to have like, we got this, like, yeah, it's, you can show the emotion and like, whatever, but all the freshmen are looking up to us. They want to see us be strong, go through it. Um, I'm definitely more of the emotional one out of two of us. So good thing you were there <laughs> for that. Um, just to have the like comfort, but not being too soft, like next man up mentality. We're fine. We got this. Um, and to move forward. Yeah. I mean, that's absolutely true. And I also think uh, with that, the people who were injured, the people who did get hurt, they had some of the best attitudes that I've really ever seen and they handled it, you know, so well, I think, I think everyone across the board, you know, I think at first it hurts and you come to that realization that, okay, I'm not playing for a little while, but then on the sidelines, you know, they're there, they're coaching players, they're helping like one-on-one -on -one if they're trying to instruct them, like, Hey, maybe try this dodge when you're going this way. They were so, so helpful to the team. So even though they weren't able to show their presence on the field, they were still there on the field just from a different perspective so I think that made that a lot easier as well knowing that you know they had the belief still and they didn't lose their belief so it made the people who were still able to play have that belief and it was a lot easier for all of us um so that 2022 year we saw that also 2022 we had coach change Gary left Kayla came in yeah, yeah. We Completely are very fortunate. Yeah. Completely very different. fortunate that we got coached by two of the greatest lacrosse players ever and two of the greatest Syracuse lacrosse players. Very fortunate of that. We learned so many different things from each of them. They're both so different in their coaching style, personality, but at the same time, they're both like the best. Um, they coach different ways, but ways that are both beneficial for us. So we got to see both both sides. Um yeah, we got coached by Gary and then Kayla came in, which was awesome. I remember after we lost to BC our junior year in the national championship, you would think, all right, we made it to national championship. No one, I think, ever had the thought that Gary is leaving. I don't think that crossed any of our minds was never a thought. Maybe it was. I don't know. I don't really remember at the time, um, but the opportunity arose for him, um, the men's 
Desco stepped down or left, retired. And it was the right opportunity for Gary. He played at Syracuse. Um, and so if he was ever going to coach men's cross, it was going to be at Syracuse. And that was the time. And we were fortunate enough for him to leave, but still be down the hall. Came by a few practices, would pop in um, and was still around. But luckily, he just brought in a new legend for us, um, brought Kayla in. And so there was never really a gap or a dip in the program. We just started right where we left off. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, being coached by Gary was so incredible. He just had such faith in his players, people who recruited. When you got to campus, it was, you know, everyone meant business too. So you weren't walking into something that was like pretty lighthearted, even though it was lighthearted. It was, you know, everyone was there for business. They wanted to get better. They wanted to be in the final four. They wanted to be competing for a national championship. So on the field, you know, you played hard. You went out there and during practices, you gave a hundred percent, even when you didn't really feel like giving a hundred percent, you still did it anyways, because everyone around you was. And he was the quiet type, I'd say. And I think a lot of people would also agree with that. Um, but he was so smart. And, you know, even if he, like for me, at least one of the instances I remember, I was having probably one of the worst shooting performances of my life. And I think I literally went like, oh, for eight, I want to say. And I was like, ex like, I was expecting Gary to be so mad. <laughs> and he... <laughs> instead of like getting mad he just looked at me and I looked at him like from the sideline I looked at him and he just went like this and so I just like jogged on over and he was like <laughs> he was like what's going on I'm like I'm sorry I'm just not shooting well <laughs> and he was like all right just figure it out I'm like okay I'll figure yeah. it out so it was just like I shoot low just gotta pay guys shoot low <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, no, he just always had that faith and he let players play, let them figure it out and gave us a lot of guidance. Then coming to Kayla, who was, you know, someone I think we both looked up to. I know I did when I was younger. Yeah. So to be able to be coached by her and hear her perspectives, who, who also learned from Gary as well, but was able to put her own twist on things. Such a cool mm -hmm. experience. I think she's going to do great things with the program. Um, you know, she has Coach Defo or Coach Watkins by her side who runs the defense and does an amazing job with that. And then they brought in a new coach this year, which we'll get into in a little bit, but yeah, nothing but belief for that program. And yeah, just to tail I, it off, I think our fifth year, our final year, yeah. the last one. <laughs> the last ride. After, just like after that, it's over. Blinked and it's over. Um, a fifth year, it's kind of crazy because I think a lot of people, like, especially on social media, they, they like joke about student athletes and how mm -hmm. like they have it so tough and this and this and this, which I think it's funny because it's true, all the stuff they're saying, but it's so demanding, not only like mentally to focus on both at the same time, but physically it wears you down. You like oh four it's years, so it, hard. <laughs> it, it wears you down and I mean, you get in great shape, which is cool, but your body is just so hurting, like, especially at the end of the season too. Like come May, mm -hmm. it's it's a grind at that point because you know yeah. school's done, so all you do is focus on that. But it is an absolute grind. Your body's hitting a limit at some point, and I think for the fifth year, I was just like, wow, I can't believe my body is able to do this. And I'm only, like, I was a fifth year, and we also had a teammate who was a seventh year and sixth year. Yeah. So I'm complaining I about like, how, doing I how they're doing that. I <laughs> miss it so much. It's so weird being done. Um, it's literally the weirdest feeling ever. We'll get to that in a little bit, but I would love to do a six year because obviously I want to go back now that it's gone, but I don't know if my body could do that. Like, oh my God, it literally runs you down. It's such a grind, but you love it. That's just what you do. It's part of it. You don't really, you don't know necessarily notice it as much um in the beginning but wow I this fifth year warming up oh my god my body would hurt so bad I'd have to be in a full sweat if you saw me on the Instagram I was always in a full sweatsuit I just always practiced in that um and I would literally watch these freshmen just tie their cleats put them on and like sprint to the wherever like the warm-up line where we were warming up and they would just be oh my god I would watch them and be like I would pay so much to feel the way they are feeling. They probably aren't hurting they at got all. Fresh muscles. They are so young and 
I don't even know, but I would so many practices just watch them and be like, I would love to just take a full on jog or sprint over to my warm up line and not even be phased to where I'm like getting up. All right, I got to start jogging. I got to start moving ow, this hurts, but here we go. I just got to get warm. And they're just like skipping and laughing. And that's just, it really puts into no, perspective those, how much your body has those, been ran down. Those first two jogs are <laughs> the hardest. They are so difficult. Like, I don't know what it is about them. It's literally, I think it's maybe, what was it? 20 yards, like 20 mm-hmm. yards there and back. It was, or the side shuffle to sprints at the yeah, end Oof. so hard <laughs> Honestly, the, i'll say this the warm-up sometimes was like the hardest part of my day the, the hardest, hardest part, part of the day the, practice, the day yeah my <laughs> days weren't that. very eventful but especially my fifth year i was in like two classes and like i mentioned earlier tessa and i were just going to shoot hoops and swim laps whatever we were wanting to do walk the neighborhood dog like meg said but the warm up, I don't care how much we ran in practice, not even like we don't even run. Like they don't ever put us on the line at Syracuse. Um, we incorporate it into our drills and whatnot. Um, but we could be doing for those that know like three goal stick work. We could do that all practice, but the warm up will still be the hardest. That might my be an exaggeration. But oh my god, that's really would you bring there. that up? Um, but yeah, the warm up was the hardest thing until I had a sweat going and I was warm. My sweats never came off. I was wearing those all practice because um, we do like stand around a lot in season. You got to like game prep, game plan. It's a lot of scenarios. So it's a lot, it can be a lot of standing and then you got to get going and start running again. Um, but yeah, your fifth year, boy, does your body hurt, especially an ACL just in general, even without that, like your body hurts. Um, and for those of you that were following us in our journey, Meg and I did sort of wait a little last minute to decide if we were coming back. Um, a lot of mine was factored in if Meg was coming back or not. We had played together since freshman year. I was a righty attacker. She was a lefty attacker. I don't know what I would have done if I were to come back and you didn't. I don't know who I would have been playing with down there. Um, a lot of my decision was based off if she was going to come back or not. I know yours was with your sister and her getting hurt that season. Um, but yeah, we did sort of wait because it's a lot to put your body through again, but I do not regret it one bit. It was the best decision ever. I wish I could go back for a six year. I miss it so much. And it is the weirdest feeling not being there, not playing as season starting. I completely agree. Completely agree. Yeah. When I was coming back or when I was deciding about my fifth year, a lot of it had to do with my sister and how she was recovering from her injury. And I wanted to play with her and finish with her on the field because it felt wrong almost because we started our lacrosse journeys together when we were little. So for me, I wanted to full circle complete it with the end at the end with her. And then Meg was like, Hey, like, you're going to do your fifth year. I was like, Oh, like, I'm not sure yet. Like it depends. And she's like, okay, well, can you just, I know I'm so indecisive if you know, so indecisive if you know me. Um, So I was like, Oh, I'm not sure yet. Are you? She's like, okay, well, can you let me know when you figure it out? And I'm like, yeah, I'll figure it out at some point. She's like, okay, well, can you figure it out soon? I was like, sure. I don't know. I was like, I'm like we could not find anywhere to live I'm seriously one of the most like lax people not lax but like relaxed people ever um and I think Meg's a little bit more type a personality Mm -hmm. and I mean that in a good way yeah which is so helpful for me so helpful for me because I just tag along wherever she tells me to be I'm on a very (laughs) needs no basis with her no basis yep needs no basis um yeah I'm I, same thing Meg said, have no regrets, would do it again if I had the opportunity. And I would tell anybody who has the opportunity for a fifth year Mm -hmm. to take it, whether you take it at the school you went to for four years, or if you have the opportunity to go somewhere else, go get that experience, meet new people, still get to play the sport you love. Um, Because it does end. so worth it. Oh my God. I can't express enough. And then when it ends, it's it's over. I mean, we also obviously do have the pro league too, which we can talk about probably in a later episode or Mm -hmm. something. Um, so you do have that opportunity as well, which is so great. You know, I think the league is doing wonders for the sport and to be able to have such top talent across years of players. It's just so great to see it's fast. It's fun. Um, 
But collegially, there's nothing like it. I don't think the pro league can compare to that where you're with, you know, basically the same people for four years and you meet new people every year with the freshmen and the seniors leaving. But I just think that connection and that experience is completely different. And it's something that you have to be there to experience it, to understand what people go through on a day-to-day -day basis with each other. And I think that if you have a fifth year, just take it, no matter where it I is, remember what you too, do, like, just take it. <laughs> yeah. I remember too, when we were coming to an end our senior year, or even when we were done, but even my brother, he didn't play a sport in college, but like my older brother was like, you have to take your fifth year. Like you don't want to start a job. You don't want to go to work. Just take it. Like we would all pay so much to be back in college. And I was like, yeah, but I don't want to do school. My body hurts, blah, blah, blah. No. I would have been so upset if I did not take that fifth year. Like I'm so Agreed. thankful I did. It was for me a great year. Like social wise, I was in two classes. I was getting a certificate. I was hanging out with people all the time. Um, I just have so many memories from that. Meg, unfortunately, shout out Fran and Jewel. She was in a master's. We never saw her. She would come in late. She would leave early. That doesn't mean don't get a master's. It's great. <laughs> She's probably very happy she has it um, and it's worth it. But for me, my biggest thing my fifth year was I want to play lacrosse. I don't really want to take many classes. I want to play lacrosse. I want to hang out with my friends. I want to be able to rehab and have time for that, um, whatever it was. But yeah, I would not, I don't regret my fifth year one bit. It was the best ever. I mean, we made it to the final four. Fortunately, we didn't win. Um, but I wouldn't change it. So, yeah. Yeah. And just to backpack off the getting a master's thing, I don't, I don't regret getting it. I think it's so great that I got that experience, was able to do all that. I wish I could have done it in a year and a half. I think pushing it into a year mm -hmm. made it really challenging. Like Meg said, or like I wasn't home really ever, especially when, you know, her and Tessa were around. So I would just... <laughs> I literally felt like a ghost in that house. Like I would, I would, I would wake up in the morning, have to go like lift, and then we go to practice, and then I'd have class until like nine p.m. And these two were in bed by the time I got back. So Just I come like home. messing around, literally. <laughs> Who knows what we were doing? <laughs> um, I'd come home and then I'd have homework, so I couldn't even go hang out or with a them. Or a group project. Those were so annoying. Uh, like, yeah. You always had a stupid group project. Oh I was always God, yeah. on Zoom. I was always in group projects. It was cool though. I got to meet a lot of people doing it. Got some cool real I'm life glad. experience with some things. But I'm glad. <laughs> I know. I think I think you missed me. I think that was the problem. Yeah. Um, but I would do it again. I don't regret it. I like that I have it. Um, I like kind of use it in a weird way with what I do now, but um Either way, whatever you choose to do, I think there's no wrong path. It's just what you think's best for you, which is what we both did. So we loved it. And now enough about us. I know, right? We need to talk about now what's... we're here. Now we have the we Meg need to show. talk about what's going on. What yeah, is going on? Twenty twenty four. Twenty twenty four is finally here. Lacrosse is back. Our men, the men started off last weekend. This week those weekend, are so exciting. Hopkins, so Denver, exciting. overtime, uh, what, Maryland and double overtime. Great start for the sport of lacrosse. Um, and now women's really starts exciting. this weekend. Very excited. It is so weird. I was saying back earlier, it is so weird. Like, one, watching Syracuse games, like the men's game, from, like, my couch here, like, at home, <laughs> and not, like, in a college house or in the dome watching. Like, it is a very weird feeling. It's very weird seeing – all the posts, all the preseason posts, um, like, oh, it's game week. Like, I miss that feeling so much of we finally made it. We get to play someone else other than ourselves. Um, it's a very exciting time of year. Um, yeah, I, I'll keep saying it, but I would do a lot to go back. But <laughs> let's look forward. Let's end this segment. Um, let's look at 2024, all right? We've got big games to start off weekend number one. Um, we have a lot of going on. In the off season, we had coach changes, um, coaching changes. We had some freshmen, incoming freshmen. We had some transfers. Um, Preseason team rankings came out. So let's start with the coaching changes. 
Yeah, I mean, I think in this time period, we're seeing a lot of coaching changes. You know, we experienced a coaching change ourselves and, you know, we're kind of seeing it more often in this time frame, at least for now. Um, and there's a couple coaching changes that when I saw it, I was excited about it or I was definitely intrigued by it. And one of those is at UVA, fellow ACC school. UVA was coached by Julie Myers for the longest time. Like when I was going through recruiting, she was recruiting me. So she's been there for a long time. She has done such great things with the program. And this past year, she recently stepped away and was replaced by the Towson head coach. Uh, I don't want to say her name wrong, but Sonia LaMonica, I think it's pronounced. Um, she was the head coach at Towson. She led the team to pretty consistent winning seasons, at least. Uh, last season, if they're from their stats, they've had a couple close games, a couple significant wins. Um, they beat Georgetown in a close game by one goal. They beat Vanderbilt in double overtime. And then they were also in very close games with ranked opponents. So they were in close games with Hopkins and then Stony Brook the first time they played them. They were in between like a one and three goal game. So that's a pretty tight game for them. They have been, Sonia's led them to 11 CAA championships, championship games. They've won seven of them. So that record, you know, has that winning mentality to bring to UVA. And along with her, she brought Kerrigan Miller, who Long Island native. She uh, coached with her at Towson and came to UVA with her. And then they also brought in Kaylee Waters, who was volunteering at Army prior to this year. She was an outstanding goalie for UNC. So I'm excited to see what they're going to do with this UVA program. I mean, speaking from our experience playing them, yeah. UVA has always been a more fundamentally playing team. So I'm excited to see what kind of direction that Coach yeah, Monica can take I feel like they've them. always had – the potential. They are always right there. They have the grit. They're a very like strong physical team. Like that is always one of our more physical games. I feel like they're fast. Um, they're so close to being a really like top eight team, top seven team. Um, I think they could, it's a beautiful school. I mean, they have the ability to recruit there. Um, I think I'm hoping this coaching change helps them. Um, Julie Myers was a great coach also got recruited by her. Um, she'd been there for so long. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to see how this goes for them. Another one that stood out to me that I'm very excited about, well, two actually, um, Towson getting Cookie, Kristen Carr from UNC. I have always loved following her when she was playing. When I was in high school getting recruited, I went to the UNC camp and met her there. Um, she is like the best person ever. I only have good things to say about her. She is so nice. She is so fun. Um, so I'm very excited for her to get that head coach position. And then I think Katrina Dowd at Brown is going to be awesome. She's been floating a little bit as assistant coaches. Um, UNC Oregon was at Army with Michelle as an assistant coach. So I'm very excited to see her in a head coach role. I'm excited to see what she does. Maybe she just likes being in the assistant role, but I'm excited to see how she does. She's got Taylor Gate up there, right, with her? Yes, um, Taylor's there. So I'm excited to see how that goes for Katrina to be in a head coach role um, and hopefully help Brown out. Yeah, no, definitely. Those two are really exciting. And then another one where we saw a whole coaching staff come in is Ohio State. And before I get into this, something that I was thinking about, Ohio State, the school itself, has so much promise. You know, they have amazing facilities. It's a great school. They have amazing sports teams. So when Ohio State, you know, as a lacrosse program, um, over the past few years, I kind of had a little bit of, not say higher expectations for them, but mm -hmm. to have that great of a school, you would think you'd be able to draw out some really great players to come together and make a really great team. And I that just don't think- would be sick to go to. Are you I kidding? Know. The football, the men's team. It's And then they just built that lacrosse facility. So oh, yeah, yeah. all brand new stuff there. And it's a great school. So, you know, to see them and how they've been performing I, I, for a pretty long time, I don't know how long I want to say, but at least the past five years, I think 
also given they are a Big Ten, so they do have to compete with, you know, Northwestern, Maryland, um, Penn State, Penn State, Michigan, too. So it's it's a very competitive conference. But, you know, I just think that Ohio State has so much potential to be a really, really competitive team in the NCAA and especially in their conference as well. So getting this coach change, Amanda Moore from ECU, I am really, really excited about this. And I was talking to Meg about ECU before. I'm like ECU's biggest fangirl, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know why, because last season watching ECU play, they were so aggressive. They were very gritty. They kept really close games with Duke and UNC. Um, and I remember watching the Duke game like, oh my God, like, where is this team coming from? Which maybe I was late to the party, but I was very, very impressed by them. So to see her leave ECU and come to Ohio State, I feel really good about it. Last year, she brought ECU to a 10 and 8 overall, which, you know, you're over 500. They didn't really have any significant kind of top wins, but they were always in tight games. They played in the uh, AAC. They played against Florida last year in the championship game and lost 12-9. Lost 12-9, so they kept the game close. They're an aggressive team, so taking that head coach, putting them at Ohio State, I think that's going to do great things for the program, and I'm excited to see what she's going to bring um, to Ohio State. And she also brought with her Tiana Walfer from ECU. Wal Walfer. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong, but, and then Allie Kennedy, who was coach at UVA and made the shift to Ohio state. So both of them have great experience. So seeing them at Ohio state and what they've done at their previous programs, I'm really, really excited. Um, and then something else, the final one we'll finish with these coaches is at our alma mater, Syracuse university has brought in Abigail Rafis the previous head coach at Siena. Um, she yeah. is someone that the team has been really excited about, and they are still excited that she's there. Yeah. She's heard all taken Siena and yeah, she's taken Siena to numerous uh, conference championships. Um, I don't, I think she may have won one or two of them. If mm -hmm. I'm not, I think she brought them to five conference championships um, and I know she's won one of them. So she does have a winning mentality. She comes from a great family. Um, a lot of Syracuse lineage in the Rafis family. Um, one of her, I guess her only brother, uh, Steven <laughs> Rafis <laughs> played for the Syracuse men's team and was phenomenal there. Um, so to be able to have Abigail come and be a coach for Syracuse and extend that family even further. I know we're really excited about it and the team's excited. So I'm excited to see the kind of transformation she's made since she got there. Yeah. Well said. Um, I think that wraps it up for some of the top coaching changes. Um, and now let's talk about some rule changes. We have the green card in the thirties. Um, I talked to a few people that I know that are still playing um, about the past scrimmages that they have had, how they're going, competition, and something I keep hearing about is the green card in the 30s. It's definitely going to slow the, slow the game down, I will say that. Um, I think it'll be interesting going man up, man down that much consistently, that often. I mean, how I don't know how often it happens, but it'll be very interesting to see how it plays out this season. Um yeah, I talked to some people from the Stanford Northwestern scrimmage, and that was something they mentioned. And then flopping. I think that'll be very interesting to see the way the refs call it and how they go about it. Um, I'm not sure how you make that very consistent. I think that's going to get a lot of um, palms up reactions from some players. Just like, But I do think it's necessary. I think there's a lot of flopping going on um, for – Sorry, but defenders when attackers are riding, I'm just going to say it. Um, but personally, I felt like there was a lot of flopping during that. Everyone can say their own opinion, whatever. I'm sure it goes both ways. Everyone has their own thoughts and opinions. Um, I will be a little bit biased, though, talking about it because that's what, how I experienced it. Um, but I am going to be very curious to see how that gets called, how refs sort of balance that and make it as consistent as they can. Yeah, I think with the flopping calls – it's all very subjective and I think it's going to take the right unit of refs to ref a game together to really get that right, which is definitely going to take some time. Uh, but I do think that it's a good 
it's a good implementation of a rule. I think flopping, it's one of those things you see it happen. You're like, ugh, like you hate to see that. Mm -hmm. Um, it's like people kind of drawing the foul almost, but a little bit different. Um, and for those of you who might not know what flopping is, just thought about this. A flop is when, let's say I'm an attacker and I'm going against a defender and I lean into my defender and my defender gives me a little nudge, nothing crazy, just a little nudge with their stick. And I like fly off of them. My goggles fly off my head. I'm, it's an over dramatic, dramatic yes. foul. And it's, if you play or if you watch sports, you can see a flop and be like, that was a flop. So that's why I'm curious to see how the refs are going to call it um, throughout the season as that goes on. And then as far as the green cards go in between the thirties, I'm interested to see how much it's going to kind of slow the game down. I've heard a little bit like, Oh, it wasn't that much longer. Oh, it took forever because there was this many fouls in the first half or this many green cards in the first half. And I think something that, you know, women's lacrosse has been trying to evolve with is making the game faster. We want to play fast. We want to play aggressive And I think to keep adding or to add another implement or another aspect to slow the game down, because I mean, awarding the green card, you know, the green card goes, it's 10, 10 seconds, 15 seconds of, all right, let's set up. So that's going to add up if you're getting, you know, double digit fouls like this um, between the thirties. And I'm also curious with this to see how it affects the ride. Because I know for us, you know, you're trying to trap someone or you want to get them to the sideline or you want to make a double team, something like that. So But if you're in the ride and you're coming up the field, but if you bump someone and they fall and the ref call it a foul, that that's a green card. So you're putting your defense man down. Or is it a flop? Or is it that's subjective? So very curious to see how that goes and how teams will be handling this come week one. But those were just two of the rule changes that we've been hearing about um, and stuff that we wanted to talk about. So moving forward from there, we'll move into our preseason team rankings. I think if you look across every single ranking, because there's a million, there's like a million different rankings. There's US lacrosse, there's IL women, there's NCAA. So it's like, really, where do I look? There's Nike. I think they do one too. Yeah. Media polls. So US lacrosse. everyone kind of has their different rankings. (laughs) I think... Honestly, across the board, I think the top 10 that they have out there, they've pretty much gotten right. Top five, you know, they have their Northwestern, they have BC, they got UNC, Denver, Cuse, um, down James the line. Madison, so I feel like JMU, yeah. Notre Dame, Loyola, Maryland, and Florida. Those are your top 10 off of the inside the cross ranking. Um, but yeah, sorry to cut you off, Meg. Um, but- no, you're fine. I think the top four or five are pretty standard. I think that's sort of what everyone would expect it to be. I'd be interested to see if someone had something different to say. Maybe they have something different to say within the top five of who should be what one through five, but those top five are in there somewhere, um, whether you want UNC to be two and BC three or Denver to be five and Syracuse four, whatever it may be. Um, I think those are pretty standard. I do think it is a pr- pretty fair ranking. I think Denver should be four. Um, I like Syracuse at five, honestly. Um, we're not going to be biased on this show either, but I do think Syracuse at five is <laughs> is a good ranking for them. We always like – we don't really like coming in at one or two. It's just a lot. Like, let's just fly up five. Um, we'll be fine. And I – let's see, what else? JMU at six, Notre Dame seven, Loyola eight. I would love to see Loyola sort of pop off and get into – the top five, at least six, if they can. They're at eight right now. I think Loyal and Notre Dame is a good matchup. Um, I don't really know their yeah. history together. Do they play each other often? Um, but I think that is a solid matchup. James Madison at six is interesting, um, but they always like are very underrated. I feel like, yeah, like I mean, the year especially they won. yeah, especially what was it, twenty eighteen when they won the national championship. Mm-hmm. I don't think anyone had that in their like no. projections. I don't think so. So for them to come out and do that, that was huge for the school, huge for the program. Um, and, you know, since then they've just kept building and building and I'm sure they've been building before that as well, but I think they're getting that national recognition that they've been working so hard for. Yeah. Um, and I, so I'm, I'm team Notre Dame. I think that Notre Dame is going to have a great year. They've got Casey Choma, Madison Ahern. I think Jackie Wolak's still there too, right? 
Uh, you would know better than me, but... Yeah, I think she's in her fifth year. So I think they've got a pretty stacked offense. So I'm really, really excited for that. I think they'll have a lot of chemistry together. They've been playing with each other for so long now, at least it feels like. Um, but yeah, I think Notre Dame, honestly, they're always a good game. I go into that game like, all right, this it's not just a blowout. Like, this is a fight. This could go either way. Um, so they always have that grit. They're very, like, they're very gritty. They're very physical. Um, but they play well together. They're fast and they're quick. They have good stick skills. Um, but yeah, I think Notre Dame at seven, I think Notre Dame could be above JMU. I think Loyola could be higher than eight, but I think they sort of need to prove themselves a little bit more with some bigger wins. Maryland, Florida, Maryland at nine, Florida at 10. Um, I don't know. I feel like Florida is just always so close. Like I, I feel think like when we were I younger, like they could be above Maryland. We've lost, we lost to Florida a few times. I mean, we were playing at Florida, so that was never fun. We we're playing indoors all season. Now we're playing in oh, yeah. weather. Oh, was that at our senior year? We played them, yeah, a few times because we'd senior? go for spring break. Yeah, I think I think Florida when we were younger, they were absolutely like they were a powerhouse. You were playing Florida, <laughs> and it was like, oh my god, you're playing Florida, and. I think over the years they've had such talented individual players. I just, they just couldn't get over that hump the past mm-hmm. few years. So I'm excited to see what they do this year. They've got um, Danielle Pavanelli at the wheel leading the team. So excited for her to see what she's going to do. Um, but yeah, no, Florida, I would say they make sense in the top 10. I would honestly put them above Maryland, mm-hmm. but I guess we'll see. You know, there's so much, so much to look forward to. I would – Michigan's coming in at 12. I would like to see Michigan sort of make a name for themselves. Same with Army. Army at 15. I think they have so much potential. Um, Michelle's got a few years there under her belt. Um, she's sort of grooming those players, and they are very good. We scrimmaged them in a fall ball. Uh, was that our fifth year? Fifth year, yeah. Yeah, fifth year. They're a good team. They are obviously strong. Um, they're very good, and Michelle just – She's got a few years there. Um, I would love to see them sort of make a jump from 15. Um, but yeah, Hopkins at 14. I think Hopkins, I, 14 makes sense to them. Um, I would I love Hopkins to see them do well. The, I think Hopkins is on the up and up. I think, I think so too. I think with their, by little. With their coaching shifts that happened either last year or maybe the year before that, mm-hmm. I think uh, was Tim McCormack. That's his yeah. name, McCormick. McCormick. Uh, I think he's a good coach. I think he's going to do great things for Hopkins. And, you know, we saw it last year. I mean, we played them in the playoffs. I don't remember which round it was, but mm-hmm. we played them. You know, they're a strong team. You know, I think that game, we just had a, uh, we had a very exceptional game that game. But, you know, Hopkins, they're going to be a force to be reckoned with. So definitely watch out for them this season. And then USC at 17. That's another one like Ohio State. I feel like they, maybe because it's so far, maybe because it's all the way in California, but that is a school that if they could just be a little bit better, they could recruit anyone. It would be so sick to go there. Their facilities are unreal. You're in California. Um, Football is huge there. I guess they don't have a men's lacrosse team. Maybe that's a factor, um, depending on who you are. But I feel like that would be a sick school to go to. I just – I want them to be better. I hope they can get better. I hope they do well this season. I hope all these teams do well. I want to see some new names in the mix um, instead of your the basic five. I think Denver last year did a good job at that. They got their name in the mix. They made a run for their for them in the program. Um, that was awesome. I'd love to see them do just as great, um, even better this year. That was exciting just to have someone new um, in the, the usual mix, I guess. But – Yeah, I think USC at 17. Duke at 24. I think they can be higher than that. I think they'll prove themselves along the season. They just got Sarah Cooper there, our former teammate. So I think that can do a lot for their defense. Um, She's an amazing player, obviously, and has a lot of credibility there. So I think she can turn around that program and help them out. But other than that, yeah, preseason rankings, I'd say are just – about right um a few that could be questionable but also just depends on your view and where you're where you're coming from but those are preseason rankings um would love to hear what everyone's thoughts are on that if they had anything that they disagreed with or thought differently or thought someone should be higher um 
In terms of preseason players, so we went through rankings. Now let's talk about preseason players to watch. Um, Yeah, preseason players, I think, at least looking through the transfer portal, because now the transfer portal is huge. You know, you have people who are transferring, you know, their freshman year. you got fifth years that are going to different schools um, to, you know, just finish out their schooling, finishing out their eligibility. And I think two people that I'm excited about is Sarah Falk out of Albany and then Hannah Heller out of UMass. So Sarah Falk had the, I also think that's how you say her last name, Falk, um, had the game of her life. And I don't want to say that because she might've had better games before, but last year when they played UVA um, in the playoffs, that matchup, you know, you look at that matchup sometimes and you're like, okay, like UVA should win this game. But Albany was not letting that happen. This girl popped off. I don't even remember how many goals she had, but she was like point after point after point, Sarah Falk, Sarah Falk. And I was like, oh my God, it was, we were watching this game. It was so, so much fun to watch. So seeing her leave Albany hurts a little bit, but she headed down to Florida and then Hannah Heller out of UMass. We played her in the playoffs as well last year. She was so good. She's wicked fast very she's aggressive so fast like she you turn your head she's already down the field so having both of these you know very very talented players come down to florida i think is going to be so so huge for them um especially with this next person who actually just left florida we've got emma lapinto who is from florida headed up to bc she is such a talented attacker she's so crafty at x and I think she's going to fit into the BC mold pretty, pretty well. Um, and then there's also another person who headed to BC, Rachel Clark out of UVA. She was their leading goal scorer or top two, something like that there. And I think her skill level too, I think her and Emma, the way they play, I think it's, I want to say it's very different. I think they just have so many strengths in so many different places. So if they're playing together, which I don't know if they're on the same lineup or whatnot, being able to see them out there, with BC getting into that kind of program, I'm really, really excited to see what that offense is going to look like. I think it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Um, the next one is Megan Ball. She's from Rutgers. She played def- she played defender. She was a defender, <laughs> is still a defender. She headed to Maryland, has had an absolutely unreal career at Rutgers. She broke I want the ground ball record or something like that or something caused turnovers. She was leading the NCAA. It was literally something crazy like that. So, so talented. And I think coming into Maryland, I think that's going to be a huge help for them on defense. They've got uh, Emily Sterling in the cage for them, and she's been a phenomenal goalie for them so far. So I think, especially Maryland too, losing Abby Bosco, who was such an integral part of their defense, having Megan Ball come in, who has all all this experience and all this talent and putting that into that defense, I think is going to be so, so helpful for them. And then someone else who I'm really excited to watch is Arden Tierney. She played at Richmond, has had an amazing career there. She was leading the team. And I just forgot all these people I'm so excited about. Um, led the team in points, everything. She was very everywhere. She took the draw. She was shooting, assists, all that stuff. She's headed to Notre Dame to hang out with Casey and Madison Hearn. So really excited to see the trio out there. And what they're Remember gonna do. when um, Arden Tierney was on her visit at Syracuse when we went to lunch with her? Yeah. So also Arden, if you ever listen to this, so upset you didn't choose Cuse. But we had a great lunch. I thought. I thought we. <laughs> I know the sky was orange because the fires in Canada, but that yeah. doesn't happen. That doesn't happen. Um, <laughs> but you know, excited for her. Excited to see what she's going to do out there this season. And. There's so many more too. I think the transfer port the transfer portal is so so active. Um, how do you keep up? How do you keep up? But those are some transfers we're excited about. Meg, if you have any other ones. Um, honestly, I only know of the ones I've transferred to Syracuse. I'm not the best with names. I'll get better at it. But as games start to happen, I will catch on and remember who transferred from where to where whatever um but yeah meg covered it i think those are some good standouts we'll see more as um the games get started this weekend and see who's sort of standing out 
But um, from there, I think we should talk about some teams that we think have potential for some upsets coming up this season. Upsets. Oh, man. So I think if you're a top 10 team and you're playing within the top 10, I think if you're ranked four or you're ranked six or seven, which I know is not that big of a jump, but that's anybody's game, in my yeah. opinion. I think as far as the rankings go, if you're in that top 10 every time you play someone in there, it's going to be a competitive game. And even if you want to push it to the top 15 as well, I think they're going to give you a run for your money too. And especially if they come in and they have a great day, who knows? It could kind of go either way for you guys. i going to name two. I'll name three right off the bat that I want to see do well this season and make some upsets. Army, super confident in them. I want them to pop off. I really hope they get some upsets um, and just make a name for themselves and start building a program down there. Um, second one, Michigan. I think Michigan's been very close. I think they can do it. Um, I want to see them do well. I want to see them get up into the top eight. Um, they're at 12 right now. And then third, not in the top 25, but I would love to see to see them do well is Stanford. Um, they have Annabelle first there. That is a very great player. Um, I think she can help out a lot and do well this year. Um, Jay Brown also shout out. Um, so I think I would love to see them do well. They're so close. Um, but yeah, those are three right off the top of my head that I would love to see do well this season. Yeah, no, I completely agree with Meg. Um, definitely Army, definitely Michigan. I think Stanford's right there. And um, I think I'm excited for Clemson. I know last year they had a pretty good season. Um, they've got some more transfers this year, which is so great to kind of build the team and have that leadership kind of instilled there. So being able to have that team of, you know, now there's sophomores, freshmen, and obviously there's the transfers in the middle and the fifth years. But I think putting that together um, is just going to be good for them. So I'm excited to see what they do with that. And then – Someone that I'm just intrigued to watch more so is USF. Um, it's their first first season. They've got the transfer from Clemson, Sophia Chepnik. She interesting. Mm, yeah. She had a very she had a stellar season um, for Clemson. I think she was out for a little while, but when she was on the field, she was making an impact. She was making plays. So I'm excited to see what she does with that and brings to that first year program. Who is under Mindy McCord, who coached at Jacksonville for a long time. So she's still still staying in Florida, but, you know, starting off that program. Um, so I'm excited to see what she does with that. Awesome. Well, I think those are some good teams to keep an eye on as the season gets started. Um, Meg, who do you think is going to make it to the Final Four if you had to guess right now or predict? So if I had to guess right now, I would say that the Final Four in Cary, North Carolina – on Memorial Day weekend is going to be Northwestern, Boston College, Denver, and Syracuse. Got to go with my girls right. in orange. But as far as Denver, I think Meg kind of touched on it before. Denver has been a team that's been building for a while, similar to some other teams. But I think last year and the year before that, even a little bit, they were kind of breaking through and getting that national recognition that they deserve. I think their their defense is unbelievable. And I think they're returning a lot this year too. So that'll be fun to watch. I think, you know, offensively, they'll get better together. So I think that they'll have a strong run this year. And I just think, you know, this BC team, they've lost a couple people, but they're also gaining a lot of people too. They've got a good goalie in net. They've got great defenders those two transfers on attack. They've got Cassidy Weeks coming back in the midfield, who is an absolute threat down the field. So we'll have her up there. And then Northwestern, there's not even much to say about them. They've got yeah, Izzy Steen back, Erin Quickendall. Um, they're playing bully ball. ball. It's going to be crazy to watch. So I think I think those teams have a, have a very, very strong chance as of February 5th. Of being <laughs> the final four. Yeah, I think those are good for um honestly that's probably who I would say too. I want to say a different four. I don't really know yet who I would leave out or put in. I would love, like I mentioned earlier, Loyola or Notre Dame to squeak in there. Um 
I don't know who I'd leave out of that, those four, though. So we're just going to have to wait and see how things play out. But if I had to guess, I'd also say Northwestern, BC, Hughes, and Denver. So we'll see. All right. Yeah, it's a lot of a lot of exciting things going on. Lacrosse starts this weekend. We're excited to be watching one of our favorite sports to watch, um, being able to see these talented athletes, talented teams fight for a spot in May. So at least for week one, here are some of the games that we're watching, Meg. Yep. Um, all right. So Friday, we've got Albany Hopkins. I think that's a very equal game. I think Hopkins will win, but it could be a chance for Albany to sort of make a name for themselves. Navy Duke, I think that's a great matchup, right? First weekend. Um, that's 24 versus 25. So I think that's a great matchup. I'm very curious to see how that goes. And then Army versus USC. I think Army will win. Um, USC, I would love to see them put up a fight. So I'm very curious to see how that plays out. Saturday, we got JMU versus UNC. That is, what, six and six versus three? Yeah, six versus three. Six versus three, yeah. Like Meg said, in 2018, JMU won it all. So who the heck knows with JMU? They could win this game. Um, we'll see how that goes on Saturday. And then we got Q's versus Northwestern. Always got to start out with someone strong, huh? Um, we started out with Northwestern last year, and we won. And then Maryland, and we won. So we definitely started off with a hard schedule last year. They're doing it again this year. Very curious to see how that goes. Um, Northwestern is basically returning the same team. They're going to be very, very good. Um, Cuse, they've lost some players, but they gained some players. So I'm very curious to see how this goes. I think it could be a great game. It's going to be at Northwestern in their indoor facility. So it's never the fun playing show. there. Never fun playing there against the Lake Show. And then we got Loyola Florida. I think that's an awesome week one matchup. No one really has film on anyone. No one ha really has a scout against anyone. We've only been playing each other. So this is a great opportunity to start off strong, start off with someone hard that they don't have film against you. They don't really have much of an upper hand. It's very equal um, and fair chance. And yeah, I think Loyola Florida is a great game for the first weekend. And then Sunday we'll end with UVA versus Stanford. I would love to see Stanford win that game. I think they can. Um, UVA with new coaching staff, I think Stanford could come in and win. And then Duke versus High Point, good chance for High Point to get an upset. I think Duke will win, but I guess we'll see. Yeah, no, I agree with what Meg's saying. I think if I had to choose a game each day to watch, you know, I think Friday, I'm absolutely turning in, I'm tuning into Army USC. Yep. I think last year, both teams had really great seasons for their program, great seasons for the team. You had USC going up against Denver and keeping it a tight game. So I think both of those teams, I think that's just a really, really good matchup for week one. I think Saturday, you know, obviously I'm excited to watch Q's play Northwestern, but the other game I'm having my eye on is Loyola, Florida. I think that that matchup, both teams, super aggressive, so gritty. So being able to have them within that first weekend, I think that matchup is going to be one that people should watch out for. And then for Sunday, I'm curious to see UVA Stanford. You know, like Meg was saying, Stanford has some amazing players. UVA has got the new coaches. It'll be kind of nice to see what this new UVA coaching staff is going to bring and if, you know, Stanford's going to kind of step up. A few others, um, just to wrap up, would be Penn, Penn State. Good old in-state rivalry going first weekend. And then Jacksonville, Michigan. I think that's very equal. I, I think Michigan should be able to handle them. But who knows with Jacksonville? Yeah, I agree. That could be a good game as well um, to tune into if you have the chance. Yeah, tune in. Um, well, that's a wrap for our very first episode of The Meg Show. Thank you guys for supporting us. Oh. If you don't follow us now, check us out on Instagram at the Meg Show Pod. Follow along, tune in. Um, but yeah, we will be uh, attaching some sort of question box link in our bio. We're not sure yet, but there will be a way for you guys to submit questions for us to answer throughout the season on the podcast. Yeah, we want to be, to go off the questions piece, we want to be as interactive with you guys as possible. And especially with lacrosse. I know sometimes for people who are newer watchers or even people who have played forever, there's going to be questions. So whether you want to ask us questions about ourself, if you want to ask lacrosse questions, if you want to ask about our opinions on things um, lacrosse related, please feel free to submit those questions. We'll get that out to you as soon as it's kind of finalized over here. But 
that's really it. We are going to check back in with you guys in a week after week one games are all done. We'll be recapping week one, what we're seeing and what we're looking forward to, who's standing out and how it's all going. And keep in mind, it will only be week one. So there's a lot, a lot of lacrosse left to play. But I think this first weekend, there's a lot of exciting matchups, a lot of exciting lacrosse. So if you have free time, even if you're not free, make yourself free. Watch these athletes play. They're so talented and so exciting. So I know we're excited. We're going to be getting into it. Yep. And we will be checking back in with you guys next week. Thank you so much for tuning in to the episode zero of The Meg Show. We'll see you guys next week.